Yeah. What's time? It's your boy Hancho right here on Cultura with K Podcast. Gang. Hey everyone, this is the Cultura with K Podcast. I'm your host, the only Kayla, and today I have Hancho. What's up? Now, Hancho, you have been super busy lately. You know, you've been making a lot of waves in the industry. Tell me, how have you been adapting to all of the success recently? I mean, it's been smooth. Like it, it came with uh, the time. Like so, I, so I really like was like as it was coming, I was already going into it. You feel me? So, so as it came, it really wasn't like no surprise. It was smooth mm-hmm. to me. It was regular. You know, getting famous, being well known, and just kind of getting hit with fame all at once. Do you feel like you were prepared for it when, you know, your your name started buzzing, your music, you know, started going viral and people started to really start catching on to you? Or do you feel like that's something that you still have to kind of prepare for? I feel like I was prepared in my own way, but like like professionally I wasn't ready. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like I still I still gotta get there, like in a lot of ways, like my uh my image, my performance, you feel me, how that so how are you preparing to kind of get there professionally? Uh, I'm really a vibe type dude, really. So I really, don't, I really don't even be preparing. Like I just know it's gonna come when the time, like when the time right, it's gonna come. I'm gonna get that. Now I know you're from Atlanta. Talk to me a little bit about growing up in Atlanta. What part are you from, and when you kind of started rapping? Uh, I'm from the east side, uh, Glenwood to be exact. Uh, but I came up on second now, but it's all on the east side, like it's, it's right down the street. Uh, I started rapping. I probably started rapping when I was like seventeen, I think. I think I was like seventeen. I started rapping. I just tried it, wrote a song, I rapped it to somebody that they liked it, and then I just kept going with it for now. Now I know that you uh, speak about growing up with your mom. Mm -hmm. and how your mom played a very vital role in your life and how she did the absolute best that she could to raise you. But in reality, there's just certain things that she couldn't teach you about being a man. Uh, What are some of those things that you feel like you had to learn on your own? I mean, you got to learn how to be on your own. You feel me? Like, uh, I don't even know how to explain it. It was just like, a mama can't. A mama can do what she can, but I don't think she can teach you how to how to be on your own. Like I don't think she can prepare you for the world. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like you you got to go out there and figure that out yourself. You feel me? And that's what I did. But some some people can. But how I grew up, my mama had so much going on. Like she was trying to figure out herself. Like I had to get out there and figure it out myself, so I can help all us figure it out. How did you figure it out? What are some things that you did? I learned from experiences. You feel me? Like. Like I was doing what I was doing in the streets, you feel me, and it and it ended me up in the in the wrong place. But I was I was rapping still, like, and then I just turned that all over. It's like I know I ain't trying to I know I ain't trying to live like this. I ain't gonna lie, if I could have if I uh, could have got a job, I would. You feel me? Like if I go back in time and get a job, I would. But I ain't tripping by how how I lived though. But like all the cases and stuff like that's that that's messed that messed up my record. You feel me? I can't do it. I can't do a lot that I probably would have been able to do. Like I ain't I ain't been out the country none of that. Outside of that, I know you're a father, mm-hmm. um, and I know that your son makes you very happy. How did you learn how to be a father? Because I know it's not an easy task, and like you said, you had your mom, but how did you kind of train yourself to? kind of be an example of something that you kind of didn't see? I mean, I ain't, I ain't having myself personally, but I got uncles who, who they are they are good fathers to their kids, you feel me? And then, like, I'm, a, I'm family-oriented, you feel me? Like, we keep family close. Like, we always just tell each other, like, family how we got. So, like, I know with my family, I'm going to do the same thing. What's uh, some advice that you would give to your son growing up, something that you've learned in your life that you want to kind of pass down to him? I mean, only thing I'm going to tell my son, man, do whatever you want to do. You feel me? Ain't nobody going to mess with you. Do whatever you want to do. <laughs> awesome. And I'm with you, whatever. All right. So now um, this is a part of the segment. Let me get my phone real quick. Um, it's called Three Shots In with Huncho. It's a rapid fire segment. I'm just going to ask you um, some questions and then you answer them. All right? All right. Okay. So the first question is, who is the most Famous contact in your phone. Who is the most famous contact in my phone? 
I'm going to hear about it no more. I don't even know. I need another one. You got to give me another question. No, that's, that is that is so easy. Oh, then you have everybody's three. number, so just one. Do you have little Baby's number? I can't, yeah. Okay, there you go, little Baby. <laughs> Lil Baby's huge. Yeah, but you said the most famous. The I most famous. So you, have, you feel got, like you have I someone got, more look, famous got, than Lil Baby? The thing is, I got everybody's number, so I ain't trying to make somebody feel less famous than what they is. No, by, of course. By not saying that. But name. nobody knows the other context you have, so I don't think anyone's going to feel that way. All right, so we're going to just, for the sake of the question, we'll just go with Lil Baby. He's huge. Um, second question, what is the worst date you've ever been on? I never. You never been on a date? Mm-mm. You've never had a girlfriend? I had a girlfriend. I had a girlfriend. So you guys never went on dates? Mm-mm. What is your biggest pet peeve? Something that irks you to your core? My partner, Lil John. Your partner, Lil John? Yeah. Is he in this room right now? Yeah, she get on my nerves. I can't stand that boy. Okay, okay. Yeah, he said you captain. But, all right. Next question. Uh, who is your celebrity crush? Do you have one? My celebrity crush. I know you can answer this question. Oh, yeah. I'm finna answer it. I got to get her. When I say it, I got to get her. Ashanti. Ashanti. Okay. She's timeless. That's a really good celebrity crush. Um, well, the next question was, who who do you think pays on the first date? But you've never been on a date, so... I mean... When you go on a date, I mean it's only right for the for the man to pay for it. Unless you, unless your girl doing something special for you, like let's let's um like she say like let's just I don't know. This is a special day for for the for the man, you feel okay. me? Okay. Who would you say is the greatest athlete of all time? The greatest athlete? Yes, sir. I mean I, I like LeBron James. What would you say is Atlanta's anthem? What song is Atlanta's anthem? Atlanta's anthem? Mm-hmm. Probably that uh Peaches and Eggplant by Slime. What is the worst song by your favorite artist? I ain't even got no favorite artist. I mean, worst song by by my favorite artist would probably be me. It would probably be Let's Get It. I'm tired of listening. I'm tired of hearing Let's Get It. But that's not the worst. That, you say that's your worst song? The worst song out. Right now? Yes. It's Let's Get It? Yes. What shows are you binging right now? My favorite show is, I, I like the um, Scranger Things. That's they, my show too. But they be taking too long to come out with. The, yeah, they comes out the next season and the last season comes out next year. Yeah. I like Stranger Things though. What is the worst advice you've ever gotten? Um, uh, the worst advice I ever got. No one's ever given you horrible advice. Not for real. You've never. No one's ever said something. You're like, wow, that is just horrible. But I'm so hard headed. Like when people give me advice, I don't even be paying attention. Anyway. <laughs> I don't even be staying with nobody be talking about when they be trying to give me advice. So you probably have gotten horrible advice. You just probably didn't listen. Yeah. Or like you probably just wasn't even paying attention to them. Yeah. Last question. What is your love language? You um, know, they think there's like five love languages. What is, what, like, what is a love language? Um, So there's these five love languages. Correct me um, if I'm wrong. But there's acts of service, touch, uh, quality time, gifts. And what's the other one? Words of affirmation. So, like, I probably say, I probably say, touch. Okay, that's your love I'm, language. Yeah, you like spending time and you know being with somebody. Yeah, not okay. too much time though. I, but I, I'm a, I'm a uh, touchy person though. Okay, that's why I said that. But but not too much time because you got. No, I'm gonna get up out of. I can't be with I can't be with somebody more than a day or two. I be with you two days and then I gotta get up out of. There. Talking about the music, um, when would you say? You got your like your big break, like when you started realizing, all right, people know who I am. Uh, when I when um when let's get it start buzzing in the city. Uh, my song let's get it, like um I think that was like twenty twenty one. I think it was like twenty twenty one when I dropped it, then it started going up, but it started going up before I even dropped it though. It got leaked, mm-hmm. and then everybody got it that was on it rapping it on Instagram about it. Then when I dropped it, it made it easier for it to go up. So it went straight up. Now when I'm going out, everybody taking pictures with me, stopping me, stopping me, all that. Does that feel surreal? Like, sometimes you think about it, like, I can't believe people know who I am. And, like, they want to take pictures with me. They like my music. They like my message. I mean, I'm just, I'm so used to it now. Uh, it don't even phase me. But, like, even back then, though, like, like I said, it, it came with time. Like, so I was ready for it. Like, it really didn't surprise me in there. Now, another song of yours that um, 
essentially went viral on social media was 48 Laws of Power. Yeah, 48 Laws of Power. That's one of my favorite songs. I really like it. Now, are those rules that you live by? Um... I ain't, I ain't just gonna say I ain't just gonna say all on because I, I said I said a lot of a lot of stuff in that song. You feel me? Right. But most on yes. What would you say out of that song is like the number one rule you live by in terms of the Forty Eight Laws of Power? Um, I don't know what rule it is, but I know I said I know I said uh, it should have been rule number one: keep faith in God. That's a good one. Yeah. Now you, I'm sure the song was inspired by the book. Uh, did you read the book? Um, I read. I, I ain't read the whole book. I just read like the title, like like in the book, like on every um, like before explain the explain the rules and tell you the rules. Like I was just reading the rules. Like mm-hmm. I wasn't finna read that whole book. The book. <laughs> I ain't with that. So you probably not gonna go back and finish reading it. Nah, I ain't even really. No disrespect, but I ain't really like for that laws of power. The the uh, book. Okay, but at least it inspired a little bit, you know, really, one of your really, biggest songs. Really just the name. The name I you just, like that? Yeah, I just, I just got the name for that. That's it. Um, you had mentioned that if you don't blow up by 25, you're going to quit rapping. Yeah. Do you stand by that? Yeah. What do you mean by blow up? Because I feel like you're big. I feel like a lot of people know you. What do you mean by blow up? I'm saying like, like, I'm, like I can't even walk outside, like globally, globally known. Bank account, all my bank accounts loaded, like ten houses, all that. Like my kids, my kids, kids got houses, all that. Like before they even hear or even thought of, you feel me? Bank accounts, all that. Everybody scraped, but I ain't really, you feel me? Cause I know it take time, but I ain't patient. I'm, I'm impatient. You feel me? Yeah. Like I feel like if, if some ain't. If something's taking too long, I got to find another move. I got to work another move. You feel me? And I'm getting old. I ain't getting... I mean, I ain't going to say I'm getting old, but I'm getting older. Like, I ain't yeah. getting no younger. And then yeah. time ain't on nobody's side. So I feel like I got to do something now. Like, I'm a now type of guy. So that means you're technically... Because your birthday's in a few days. You're going to... You only got a year left. Yeah. To, to get to that level. Yeah. Kind of hard. I mean, it's possible. For sure, and I think it's good that you're giving yourself like a time frame and saying, "All right, this is like this is a goal. I want to be here by next year." But at the same time, I feel like some of the greats today, right? Rappers, actors, I mean, any anyone who's just has an amazing story and who's super famous today will tell you like they've all been there. And if they would have stopped when they were feeling like I should be somewhere else, they probably wouldn't be where they are today. Like I was telling you, you know, Oprah was, I don't know if it was Oprah, somebody was like homeless in their 20s. And then you look at them today and they're like, could you imagine if this person stopped and didn't exist today? So I think that if at 25, where while yes, I think that you have the potential to definitely be there, and for sure it could most definitely happen. Mm -hmm. Um, If you're not, you know, try not to cancel yourself out or cancel, you know, what you love to do out. It definitely helped me uh, get a lot out of my mind, though. Mm-hmm. When I be rapping, I can express myself. Would you say it's like therapy? Yeah. Do you go to therapy? Mm-mm. But writing music is like your therapy. It's yeah. your way of like getting things out and yeah. getting them. Have you ever considered going to therapy? No. Nah. Are you against it? I ain't against it. It's just like I don't really like. I ain't really cool with talking to people, telling people like, yeah, like. Stuff about me and I don't really know. Yeah. I, I don't be comfortable talking to people I don't really know. I get that, but I mean that's why I be that's why I be looking like that in most of my interviews. Like what? Oh, cause you don't. Yeah. <laughs> like I be out of I be looking like I'm out of it cause I don't really be smelling talking to people I don't really know. You feel me? I don't be comfortable. Yeah. Well, I mean, down the line, if it's something you want to consider, I mean, I hear a lot of good things about it. Um, I've never been to therapy. But um, I know a lot of people that are big advocates for it, and they speak, you know, highly of it. So could be something you might be interested in down the line. Yeah. Um, now, some exciting news. I know you're going on tour with Lil Baby. Tell me about that. When does the tour start, and how did you guys make that happen? Uh, it start July. I think July 22nd. I'm not sure the exact date when it start. I know it's starting July, though. And... Uh, 
I think the, I really think the label put it together, but uh, but baby been showing me love lately though, mm-hmm. like like around that time when the, um when the uh when I had got thing how how do I say that around the time they put me on the tour, yeah, you feel me like he was showing me love around the time, and then so it was our it was our smooth like when I guess the, my label talked to his label. Uh, my label talked to him, and then they put it together. Like, and my label had called me and told me about it. So, were you excited when you heard that you were going on tour with Lil Baby? No, definitely. That's a big deal. Yeah, no, definitely. He's a major artist. Yeah, he's not just the and hottest he's... in Atlanta. He's like the hottest rapper out. Period. Yeah. Um, and I think it's super cool because he's also from Atlanta. So to have two, you know, Atlanta people running that tour, I think is amazing. Is there someone else going on the tour? Or is it just you two? Uh, it's a couple more people on, uh, going on the tour. How are you mentally preparing? For a tour, because mm-hmm. I hear that it's a lot. You know, think about it. You're working around the clock every single day. You have a show. You're going to a different city every night, and I'm sure it's exciting. But I'm sure also it can be kind of tiring. You know, mentally, physically, Definitely. emotionally. Um, so, how are you getting into that headspace of like, all right, I'm about to go to t- on tour in a few weeks? I mean, I'm ready. Like, he ready. Like, when I heard about it, I was ready. Like when they told me you finna go on tour, I was ready. Like I don't, I ain't gotta do too much getting ready. You mm-hmm. Stay, you stay ready. You ain't gotta get ready. Right. So now I know you are signed to a major label. Um, what made you want to sign with them? Because I'm sure when you know you started to blow up, there was a lot of different labels that were approaching you. What labels contacted you, and why did you go with the one that you're with now? Uh. I ain't gonna say every single label contacted me, but almost every almost every label hit me up trying to sign me. But I just went with 300 because they signed the most genuine. You feel me? I just got out of messed up situation with a label I was in already. You feel me? So I ain't want to go through that again. So the people who, who signed the most genuine, that's who I went with. What made them genuine? They ain't sound like everybody else. Everybody else was saying the same thing. The, 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 Everybody else was saying the exact same thing. Like it's like it's like they they know each other or something. They had a meeting or something before they hit me up. But so like, what were some of if you could talk about it? What were some of the things that they were saying? Because you said they all sounded the same. So like, what were they? Was it things that they were promising you? I ain't gonna I ain't gonna say what they were saying, but I'm but my the one out the label I went with personally, they gave me freedom. You feel me? Like I can do what I want to do. You feel me? Like they gonna they gonna go off what I what I want to do. You feel mm-hmm. me? Like, it ain't it ain't too much like the label doing everything. You feel me? It's really me, and they just with what I'm with. Like if I tell them something, they with it. Like if I want to drop right now, they gonna let me drop right now, and they gonna be all the way 100 percent with it. That's good. So they're giving you all basically, uh, essentially 100 percent creative control. Yeah, but and, and, it, and it's like we like a family, and whatever like even outside of music, like whatever I need, they got me. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Vice versa though. That's good because you hear a lot of artists that sign to these major labels Mm -hmm. and then it looks good like for the first few weeks, the first few months. And then when they're ready to drop a project, that's when you start hearing they won't let me release music. They they can't release a single that I want or I have to switch it up. So to hear you as an artist, especially, you know, someone who's making waves in the industry, like, listen, I signed and I signed with someone that I trust. I feel it's genuine, and they got my back. And one thing I think artists be thinking like when they sign that they need to know it's not what's going on is when you sign, it's not over. Like, you didn't make it. Like, you're not there. Just because you signed don't mean you're there. Right. It's not on your label. It's still on you. Like it's, it's it's your work ethic. It's your music. It's your image. It's your everything. It's not, it's not on your label. It's still on you. Mm-hmm. And correct me if I'm wrong, but like also when you sign to a label, just like you said, to reiterate what you just said, you know, people think like, OK, I signed to a label. I got this, you know, I got this big deal. I made it. But no, I feel like the time is actually a lot faster now. You have to you have to now prove to them like, all right, we made a good deal and sign you. So you still have to put out that work. You still have to make sure you hit those numbers. You still have to do all that stuff. Yeah, you got to show them you belong now. You got to because. It's 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 like a uh, it's like a, a team effort. You feel me? They ain't, they ain't putting that money behind you for now. Like they trying right. to they trying to make some money. You can show them that you you got to show them that you can make them and you some money. So you dropped two projects this year. Uh, they were received really well. I think a lot of people are 
really, really taking notice of you, Huncho, and I think they really like your sound. They like your your message. They like your image. They like everything about you. Talk to me about Four Days in L.A. because I feel like that that did really well. Four Days in L.A. Um, Four Days in L.A. That's just a tape I put together. Like um, my label had me come to L.A. to uh, go to this little. Um, I don't know what it's called, but it's like when all the producers, artists come down and y'all just record, work, lock in. You know, I was there for like four days. I locked in. I made a lot of songs. I probably made, I'd say like a lamb song, 10 lamb songs. But what I, I only put a couple of them on the, um, on the EP. I ain't even, I wasn't even thinking about dropping the tape, but like the part of the last song I made, and right before I was finna leave and go back to the city, I told um, I told my label like, I'm trying to drop a tape ASAP. I know I just dropped my album, but I'm trying to drop a tape ASAP. You feel me? And they was with it. Oh, good. So they didn't give you any pushback on releasing that? Mm-mm. They were what I'm with. Whatever I'm with, they with it. That's good to hear. Now, I know you released two projects this year. Are you planning on releasing a third? Yeah. Um, me and Southside. Me and Southside supposed to be dropping the album. And we putting that together now. It's on the way though. Is there a favorite producer that you really enjoy working with? I mean, all the producers that I've been working with been hard. Uh, I I really ain't got no. I ain't gonna say I got no favorite producer, but all the producers I work with be hard. But I work with everybody though. Like mm-hmm. any producer, I'm gonna get every producer a shot. I'm locking with anybody. Well, thank you so much, Huncho, for uh, stopping by. Is there anything that you want to say before we head out? Um, anything you got coming up? Um, me and Southside Project, when it drop, I need everybody to go get it. Four days in L.A. out right now, go get it on our platform. You know what I'm saying?